So you ask the question, who's going to heaven? Well, the Bible makes it very clear who isn't going to heaven. The cowardly aren't. The unbelieving, well, they're not welcome. The vile, certainly not. The murderers, no way. The sexually immoral, well, they haven't got a chance. Those who practice magic arts, they're not invited. The idolaters and all liars, well, they have reservations elsewhere. We're talking about a question that often stirs up a passionate discussion among Christians. Can someone who claims to be a true believer in Jesus continue living in a pattern of uh, unrepentant sin and still expect to attain salvation? So to cut to the chase, the short answer to that question is no. A genuine believer cannot persist in unrepentant sin and anticipate inheriting eternal life. While the, this might seem straightforward, it carries profound theological implications and it challenges our understanding of the Christian walk. So why is this the case and what does it mean for those who claim to follow Christ yet persist in a lifestyle contrary to his teachings? Well, it's a topic that delves into the heart of Christian theology. It grapples with the concepts of grace and redemption and the nature of genuine faith. Some assert that Christ's sacrifice on the cross covers all sins. Well, let's talk about this assertion. Let's start by clarifying what it means to be a true believer, what it really means. According to scripture, genuine faith in Jesus Christ results in a transformative experience that permeates every aspect of one's life. This transition isn't merely superficial. It's a profound inward renewal that is evidenced by a change in behavior and lifestyle. As talked about in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. This verse underscores the radical change that occurs when someone genuinely encounters Christ. However, what about those who profess faith yet persist in a lifestyle characterized by ongoing sin? This presents a significant challenge in discerning the authenticity of one's faith. The Bible repeatedly emphasizes the impossibility of continuing in a pattern of sin without experiencing divine intervention. Consider Hebrews 12:6, which asserts, For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. This verse reveals that God's corrective discipline is a hallmark of his loving relationship with us as his children. It's not about punishment, but about guiding us back into righteousness. This divine intervention is crucial because it aligns with God's holiness and his desires for his followers. As 1 John 3, 6 tells us, no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. This passage underscores the incongruity of ongoing sin with a genuine relationship with Christ. Continuous, unrepentant sin is symptomatic of a lack of true knowledge of God. So, therefore, if someone persists in sin without repentance, we must question the authenticity of their faith. This doesn't imply perfection, but rather a visible transformation in their relationship with sin. The presence of divine correction through discipline and a changed attitude towards sin are crucial markers of genuine belief. So now let's address the warnings found in scripture, particularly uh, in Revelation 21.8, which outlines the behaviors incompatible with the kingdom of God. This passage serves as a sobering reminder that certain actions disqualify individuals from entering God's kingdom. So Revelation 21.8 specifically states, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Ephesians 5.5 5 further expands on this, linking behaviors like sexual immorality and greed with idolatry. 
And both passages underscore the significance of living in alignment with God's standards. They highlight that God's kingdom is characterized by holiness and purity, and behaviors contrary to this reflect a a heart turned away from God. But here's the good news. God offers this transformation through his grace. He doesn't leave us just stuck in our sinful patterns. Through the Holy Spirit, believers are empowered to overcome sin and pursue holiness. So where does this leave us? A genuine believer's life isn't about perfection, but about the pursuit of holiness and repentance. Galatians 5.24 encapsulates this, stating that those who belong to Christ have crucified their sinful nature. You may hear someone say, that's what the cross was for. Well, that's true, Jesus died to pay the price for our sins. But in the most famous verse of all, John 3.16, Jesus says, whoever believes in me. Well, this actually means whoever has dedicated themselves to Christ. If you have done this, then your desire to sin is also washed away. So if a person keeps on sinning, well, they never truly knew nor believed in Jesus. So as we conclude this today, let's reflect on our own spiritual lives. Are we experiencing transformation? Is our faith more than mere words? The Bible tells us that the road to heaven is very narrow and the road to hell is wide. This isn't a simple scare tactic This is factual. Nothing in the Bible is ever made up just to try to scare someone straight. This is an actual warning telling us that the majority of the people of this earth, including multitudes of Christians, will be on the wide path. So stay focused, keep your mind on Jesus, and live your lives daily focused on your future. If you made it to this part of the video today, I would love it if you joined us in a prayer. Father, thank you for blessing our lives daily. You give us all the things we need to survive. There is nothing that we need that we do not receive from you. Father, thank you for giving Jesus to the world so that we have our sins paid for. Thank you for giving us directions in the Bible that point us in the direction of salvation. Thank you for the step-by-step list of the things that we need to do to receive this gift. Father, be with our Jewish brothers and sisters around the world and particularly in Israel as the tensions in that area rise daily. We know these things are all foretold as signs of your return. We look forward to the day where you return to claim your kingdom. Father, as usual, please protect us from the evil one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.